In this video we're going to look at the given question where they have asked us to go and draw the interpenetration curve in the front view as well as to draw the interpenetration curve in a right view which we'll put over here later. We're going to do the video in two different parts but first of all as with all of these drawings we are going to start off with our first step which is to number all of our views and we start our numbering always in the views where we can see the true shape of our pipes. So there's the true shape of our secondary pipe and that's the true shape of our main pipe. So I'm going to start with my secondary pipe. I'm going to use letters and do A, B, C and D for my secondary pipe. And then I'm going to transfer that numbering from my auxiliary view here into my top view and remember that this gets flipped up and over okay and XY so point C will be seen here first and then point A so that'll be C comma A as this would be moved up and over and then of course this will be point B and of course this will be D and then we're also going to transfer this numbering from our top view into our front view and because we know we're looking from the top here, we see point C first and then A below it. And if you follow your line up, then point C will be at the top since it's seen in our top view first. So this will be point C and below it will be point A. And then of course this, if you follow that point up, that will be B. And if you follow D up, that will be D. Then we're also going to number our main pipe. And I'm going to use numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then I'm also going to transfer this numbering into my front view. And since we're looking from that direction for our front view, we know here we're going to see 5 first and then 3 behind it. So if I project that up, I know that this corner here will be 5, 3. Same with this one, 5, 3. And then, of course, here we'll have 6 first and then 2, 6 seen in front and then 2 behind it. So that will be 6, 2, as well as up here, 6, 2. And then, of course, this will be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then on the side here, 4 and 4. Okay, now that our numbering is complete, now we can go and find the interpenetration curve in our front view. Our next step is to first of all project up each of the termination points of the sides of our secondary pipe. Here's our secondary pipe here. It's got four different sides. So we're going to go and find where each of these sides terminate as they hit into the main pipe. And if we start with point B here, side B terminates there. So we're going to project that termination point straight up into our front view. So the termination point for point B goes up and we're then going to mark that off where it intersects with point B in our front view which has been projected across and we're going to mark it and label that as the intersection or the termination point of point B. We'll then do the same for point C and point A. Both of them terminate at the same place. Okay, on where they hit into the main pipe, so we're going to project that point up. And then we're going to follow point A across to where it intersects with our line we've projected up, which will be there. So that will be the termination point for point A. And then the same for point C. We'll mark that off. It's on the same line. That will be the termination point point C. The last one, point D, it terminates where it hits into the main pipe there. So we're going to project that point straight up and line it up with where it line where with point D in our front view and mark it. Okay, so we've completed finding our termination points and now we have to find our turning points which we do have in this drawing because we can clearly see that two faces of our secondary pipe, that one there and there, hit into two corners 
of our main pipe, corner 4 and corner 5. So we're going to take each of those corners and this secondary pipe has been placed at a 30 degree angle okay, to our vertical plane, it's a 30 degree angle. So we're going to take our 30 degree set square and we're going to project 0.5 onto our auxiliary view and we're going to also project 0.4 onto our auxiliary view. Those are two corners that our secondary pipe hits into. And then we're going to mark each of these points where they hit into our auxiliary view. And I'm going to label that as turning point 1. And that one is turning point 2. Over here we'll do turning point 3. And over here, turning point 4. Okay, now that we have our turning points in this auxiliary view, we have to transfer them into our front view. And to do that, we need another auxiliary view. Okay, so we're going to have to go and repeat this auxiliary view up here in line with our secondary pipe in our front view. So I'm just going to go and construct our square here. Now, luckily, we already have the center point as well as the top and bottom points for it. So it shouldn't take us very long to simply go and join those up to create ourselves another auxiliary view. And then of course the other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to transfer our labeling onto that auxiliary view. Okay, so there's our auxiliary view. And now to transfer our labeling, we can just project it across here from our from our front view. So that will be point C. That bottom one of course is A. And because we know this is flipped up and over, okay, then we know that our first point here is going to be D over there and B over there. Yeah, because this is flipped up and over onto this view, D would have to be seen first, and D is in front there, B further back. As you can see here in our front view, D is in front and B is further back. Okay, so we've transferred our labeling onto our auxiliary view, and now we can take each of our turning points and transfer them to that auxiliary view. And to do that, we have to measure them. So we're going to measure each of them, and we're going to start with turning point 1, and we have to be very careful here. We have to make sure that we watch which line our turning points are on. So this turning point 1 is on line AB. So I'm going to measure from point A to my turning point. And that's 20 millimeters. And I'm going to take it from A, but I've got to do it on line AB. Here in my auxiliary view, which you can see is there. And I'm going to mark it from A on that line AB. And then I can write in there that that is turning point 1. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the next set of turning points. The next turning point, turning point 2, that's on line BC. So I'm going to measure from B. That's 13 millimeters. And that was on line BC. So there's line BC. And I'm going to measure my 13 millimeters there. Mark it off. And that will then be turning point Two. Then I'm going to do the same thing with turning point 3 and 4. Let's take turning point 4, it's on DC. So I measure that, that's 12 millimeters. Okay, so on DC, I'm going to go and mark that off. That was turning point 4. And then over here on line AD, that's also 12 millimeters. So here's line AD. Going to measure off 12 millimeters. Mark it and label. Okay, now we've transferred each of our turning points that we had here in our top view. We've laid each of the turning points in the top view. We've now transferred them into our auxiliary view in the front view over here. And now we're going to project them across. And we're going to project them across onto our front view. So there's turning point one, turning point three, turning point four, 
and turning point 2. And then we have to match them up with the corner that they hit into. So here's corner 4. Corner 4 belongs to turning point 1 and turning point 2. So if we take turning point 1 and we match it up with those two lines, then that is where turning point 1 will land up in our front view. And then turning point 2 on the same line, that's where turning point 2 will be. Turning point 3 and 4 match up with corner 5. So if we project that up there, and we then bring corner 3 and, so turning point 3 and 4 onto corner 5, that will then be turning point 3. And then this one, of course, will be turning point 4. Okay, now we've completed that step, found all of our turning points. Now we have to go and use our auxiliary view map over here. I like to call it a map to tell us from which point we go to which other point to join them up. And the other thing we're also going to have to check is our hidden detail. So we know we're looking at a front view from this direction. We also know that line C over here is the highest point of our secondary pipe. You can see it there in the front view. It's the highest point okay, with line A below it. And because line C over there is the highest point, anything that falls behind line C on this side here is going to become hidden detail because this face over here on using line DC is going to be sitting in front of it. So we know that anything behind line C over here, this part here, is going to be hidden detail. So we also know that anything here is going to be hidden detail if we look at our auxiliary view. So I'm actually going to use this auxiliary view for my map. It will be easier. So I'm going to have a look here and start at point A and move clockwise going from A to B. Okay, so we're going to have a look here. We're going to start at point A here and we need to join A to B. But according to our map, we have to go from A to t turning point 1 first and then to point B. So we're going to take line A. We're going to go to turning point 1 first. Also, that's going to be a hidden detail line because it's detail which is sitting on that side of point C. Okay, so from A to turning point 1 and then from turning point 1 to B, also on that side of point C, so it's still going to be hidden detail. So we go from turning point 1 to B and then from B to turning point 2, still hidden detail. Still just following my map. And then from turning point 2 to C, still hidden detail. And then from C to turning point 4, now we're into the into non-hidden detail on this side of here because we're on the other side of point C. So from C to turning point 4, and then from turning point 4 to D, and then from D to turning point 3 and from turning point 3 to A okay that completes our interpenetration curve in the front view now all we have to do is complete that front view okay this as well we need to watch carefully as to what we do here because there's certain parts that will be dark and certain parts hidden detail. This line 5, of course, up until the turning points is going to be a, a dark line. So we can go and draw that in straight away. But then our line 4 over here, that line 4 there, part of it goes down and goes down and hits our turning point 1 and 2. But it hits it on the hidden detail side. So as soon as our line 4 passes past our line C over there, it will become hidden detail all the way down until it hits into turning point 2 there and the same thing here, it's dark until it goes to point A and then as soon as it goes behind point A 
we are hidden detail again to turning point one. Okay, and then the last thing to do is to go and extend our lines to their termination points. D went to there, C terminated there, and A terminated there. Now we have a complete front view with its curve shown there.